welcome to Mother Care. It's always a pleasure and privilege bringing the show to you. My name is Marion, and today I'm quite excited because last week we started a topic that amazing reactions from. Ah, so when everybody was looking at me like when I was asking questions about a man's factory, like I was the only one. All of you now have comments and questions about the men's factories. Well, the doctor is back in the house today, and we'll be talking about the second part of that issue. For those of you who missed last week, I don't know what to do. But for today, sit back, relax, and get more education and information from the doctor. Today's topic is interesting, but I won't let the cat out of the bag. I will let our short documentary do the explaining. It's Mother Care. Stay with us. Secondary infertility is the absence of a live birth for women who desire a child and have been in a union for at least five years since their live birth, during which they did not use any contraceptives. When a child is conceived with ease, one may feel completely off guard by the difficulty of having a second child, and as a result of this, one needs to take charge and report to the gynecologist. The emotional experience of secondary infertility is often the compilation of distressing feeling of anger, grief, depression, isolation, and being out of control. Sadly, couples with secondary infertility tend to receive less support socially from others than couples with primary infertility. Current treatment has helped to encourage couples to seek help in overcoming fertility challenges. For example, the pregnancy rate for couples using assisted reproductive technology ART now exceed the monthly fertility rate for couples without fertility problems. Early evaluation allows people to be aware of any problems that may exist and to explore treatment options that may be helpful in improving the chances of successful conception. Welcome back. So now we know it's all about secondary infertility. That's our feature documentary today and that's our focus today on the show. So we decided to go to the streets to talk to real moms on this issue and I'm sure a lot of women have things to say because most times when we hear the word infertility, we just look at the woman, never look at the man. So let's hear what real moms have to say about this. Secondary infertility occurs when a couple has had a child and then despite frequent sexual intercourse, after one year they are not able to have an offspring. When a couple who has, um, either the man or the, or the woman who has fathered the child or um, a woman who has been pregnant before and suddenly and then cannot conceive again, so that, that's secondary infertility. Because infertility is not, it's not just to a woman's side, now it's 50-50, um, 50-50 chance. Okay. It could be that be from the man's side or from the woman's side. So, but, um, so at the same time, when you want to look for, when you look for the cause of secondary infertility, you also have to evaluate the men. Yes, you have to know how um, change that semen is variable. It simply means that the couple may have had an issue, a child before. Either the male has had a, a child before this time, or the woman has also had a child. Then a, a pair of years, a minimum of one year to two years to three years, they have been unable to conceive. That is secondary infertility. That they have previously been fertile, then in between then and now, they have become infertile. Welcome back, it's still Mother Care, and I have my doctor in the house who's going to be talking about the issue today. I've got Dr. Ernest Ugochukonogu back in the studios with me. He's the Chief Medical Director, Eagle Clinic and Health Consultancy Services Limited. Welcome back, Doc. Thank you very you much. You put me into trouble with this factory. Oh. All my female <laughs> friends were asking me about the factory settings. I said they just told me it was a factory. I didn't know there were settings to it. How did you get the name factory? You know, what is a factory, for instance? <laughs> Where the raw materials are used. <laughs> and up. then a product is it's pro produced it's pro and it's then taken out. It's now taken out. And you. that's the end product. That's the that end product. That is to, to a the baby. Uh -huh. yeah, goes into so factory, okay. raw products you know produced and it has to come out in the assembly line and yes, then we exactly. say, thank you you're right i'm learning <laughs> okay 
Okay, so today's topic is secondary infertility. Last week we talked about primary, and that's the one that is almost natural. It comes, you know. What is secondary infertility? Most of the time, it's just something that has man made. Oh, you know, okay. somebody, you know, God created, has created the one so well, perfectly. Mm. Everything in order. But because of one's carelessness, okay. you know, you know, lifestyle, a problem comes in somewhere. Okay. All right? When there is unable, when the couple is not able to reproduce, mm. a couple, people who are of marriage age, mm. okay, who are married, of course, within 15 and 48 years, mm. and they are cohabited within three months, okay, six months, and then able to achieve pregnancy. And maybe a lot of them, before getting married, were, you know, had a, a story of being pregnant some time ago, oh. earlier, or even when they're pregnant. They, you know, you have had some, where in marriage, they've had some babies already. Mm. But they found out that they can no longer, they now need more babies. They can't have babies anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. When I said it's secondary, in other words, it wasn't there from beginning. From beginning, beginning they were all right. Okay. I mean, they, they have achieved pregnancy before, mm. in, you know, by each other's individual experience. Oh. She said before marriage, okay. a lady has told the man once that he, she was pregnant mm. for him. And the lady was once pregnant okay. for somebody, and now they got married. And they they, they can't, can't mm. okay, uh, they can't achieve pregnancy. It consists, you know, it's second or also, or they have come together, they have had babies, you know, about one, and they want to have the second one. They are not able to yes, achieve pregnancy. Yes, I was going to say that, so like that maybe you had a, fir a first child, and then six, can't seven, eight years after, you can't seem to have a second one. Second infertility, so infertility. So what causes that? These are some of the things, like I mentioned, it's just what the cause that we are not there before. For instance. The lifestyle, you know, that's why it's very, very important for us to know this. You know, premarital sex, mm. one of the major causes of secondary infertility. All right, in the process, you would have just picked contracted infections, oh. sexually transmitted infections that would have damaged the womb, you know, block the tubes. They now get married. I mean, somewhere they can't achieve pregnancy mm. anymore. Maybe somewhere even then they would have been pregnant. Or, was pregnant and that is just it. Or the two when they produce the two are blocked, it cannot transmit the sperm. Mm. Okay? They remain in the testes. Okay? We we'll call it or you know, um spim or sometimes they have low sperm count for whatever reason. Mm. Infection most of the time. So infection either way, causing blockage of tube either way. Mm. In the woman mm. and the, woman, the man. The man. Okay. Because you know, it can also be due to hormonal changes, especially in the women. Okay. okay. What you know, do you mean by that? Hormone, the hormones, like I mentioned okay. earlier, the substances that secret in the body that mediate the reproductive process. Mm. And uh, some of them, because while they were single, they would have just be using pills. Oh. You know, pills are hormone. You know, oh. they are hormones. They take in order to dis, they just disrupt, disrupt the process. The cycle. Okay. So the person cannot get pregnant. Mm. You know, and in that process, that can then persist. All right. And cause some damage, you know, and they remain cause hormonal derangement. Mm. So they can also they are disorganized. Okay. The hormones remain disorganized. The rhythm, the body normal rhythm, has been interrupted. So they can no longer achieve pregnancy. Mm. Of course, if for whatever reason somebody has a challenge in the brain, you know, in the pituitary, it can also interrupt the description of the hormone from the brain mm. that can cause infertility in women. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we don't understand this, second infertility. And uh, then, of course, in a, a, for whatever reason, it can, be, it can be just induced by, of course, family planning, you in the process, you just say, I don't want babies, you well, block well, the tubes. Yeah. And now, or you put IUCD, put mm -hmm. other modes of mm -hmm. contraception, and you now want to have the baby, you can no longer have it, oh. okay, because the process has been interrupted in the okay. process and it, it cannot re-establish the process anymore. Mm. Or the tooth you blocked can no longer open, you mm. know, uh, surgically, you know. So these are the main causes of, you know, could be hormonal, most of the time infection. In fact, infection is a major block, tuba blockage. Wow. I only try to mention the causes of tuba mm. block, what, you know, can block the tube. And of course, low sperm count in the man. I've just mentioned the processes yes. that can lead to low sperm count. count. These are two things, majority, that are responsible 
of course, it's called infertility in women and okay. men. Okay, or now in a couple. In a couple. Mm -hmm. I remember when we talked about primary infertility, you, you talked about how difficult it is to you know go around it and actually um, achieve pregnancy. What about secondary infertility? Is it is it as difficult it's or not is as it difficult. easier to? It's not as difficult. Sometimes you okay. achieve. All you need to do is to balance the hormone again, and they achieve ovulation and they get pregnant. Or also introduce the raw mattress into the factory, and they, like I said, you know, it comes the, out again. It comes out again, produces in large quantity. Okay. You know, the sperm and the person can also pregnant the wife. And of course, the tools that are blocked can be opened. So, mm. You know, surgically, you know, they are processing. What about fibroid? Where, do, where does fibroid yeah, fit fibroid into comes this? in? Yes, secondary. It's not. It's, it's secondary, but okay. it depends on the location. It's ah, not. It does, it's okay. not always responsible. Mm. It's location. If it blocks, if you locate where the tubes are, or where the the baby or the oh, fetus fertilizer we'll gets embedded after fertilization, mm. so each time you have habitual abortion. Ah, okay, okay. okay. The, each time it, it gets there, it can't get embedded. It's aborted. Mm. Okay. So these are things that can cause some infertility in a woman. Of course, you, you can't take away habitual abortion as also one of the things because oh, okay. there are things that can. When the person takes him, it's not that he can't take him, but he cannot he he doesn't pregnancy. stay, yes. He can't return pregnancy. Okay. There are things also yeah, that are responsible. Okay, I was also going to ask uh, one quick question before we let you go. You talked about the family planning uh, when you when you use um, that and you can interrupt. So what advice would you give a woman who wants to have kids and thinking maybe should I space three years, should I space four years? What kind of advice would you give thinking about that? I, I, I've seen a couple after marriage, they say they don't want to have a baby. I don't know what they're applying in. If you're married, <laughs> they be in <laughs> Europe. But in Nigeria, in Nigeria, you say you want to stay for, I've seen. And, it's not, and by the time they are ready to have the baby, the baby is no longer, it's not for oh. coming. They say they're getting involved with, you know, mm. these things. And what I advise people is that don't just plan until when you have had at least two babies. Okay. Or you've had the sexes as you need, mm. you know, before you start, because for instance, there is uh, IUCD, intra-intrant contraceptive device, the one you sat in the womb, we call copper tea or whatever, can introduce infection. Mm. You know, the presence, especially when the, uh, the woman involved does not have very good toilet hygiene. Oh. Infection can go into the womb. And of course, the tooth will be blocked. Even when you remove the IUCD, the woman can no longer okay. get pregnant. Okay. So these are some of the challenges you can notice. Mm. Of course, most of the family planning are female-oriented. Mm -hmm. It's a gender issue. Yes. I know you talk about it. Yes. Know, yes, yes. But the one for men, we don't like it. We don't like it. We don't yes. even talk about it. We don't yeah, even we don't, know. Yeah, we, you don't yes. need to know. Uh, you see now? You don't yes. need to know. Yes. It's weird that just carries all the whole load. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, uh, <laughs> that is it. It's what we give you. It's what you have. It's what you get. <laughs> I like dog. I like dog for that. Well, thank you. This is a lot of information. And it's good for if you if you are thinking of family. But if you just get married, have a discussion, even with your doctor. Yes. I remember growing up, my mom used to say that when you get married, have a discussion with your doctor, what your plans are. And it seemed like, uh, but it's really important so that they can give you advice as to what to do thank you so much doc thank you very very much and so we've learned something about secondary infertility today uh, we've learned what could go wrong with the male and the female and as usual doctors always pointing out the fact that it's not just the women family planning for men is available though. is available so please women do not forget do not be harassed or coerced into what <laughs> if I can do it, you too you can do it. That's my own that's, that's my I mean carrying nine months. I know we're the only ones that can do that. But everything else, 50-50. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so very much. It's we'll take a short break when we come back. All your all your questions will be answered when we go to the moment with our doctor. Dr. Clement is in the house, waiting in the wings to take all your questions. Stay with us.
welcome back. It's still Mother Care, and this is Moments with Doctors, where all your questions get to be answered. And Dr. Clement is back in the house. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Okay, so we're going to be sharing some moments with you where all the questions are going to be thrown at you. And the first one I'm going to ask you is um, someone who says they were on family planning for two years. No, they says I was using family planning, but I have stopped. And in the last two years, my wife. I guess he's talking about his wife, yeah. has not been able to take in. So he's wondering if that was the cause. All right. A very good question. A very good question. Uh, absolutely, that cannot be the absolute cause, cause. of okay. your wife not getting pregnant. Mm. Although you did not state the type that okay. uh, you used. Mm. If you had used the Jadel, for instance, maybe that would have um, protected you getting pregnant for five years or you have used the one you inserted for like five to ten years none of them that can actually stop you from getting pregnant Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, yeah it, it, they will not there could be other factors that need to be considered okay. so it is only when you've checked other factors and then um, the you'll be able to say this is the cause and of course remember this method of family planning are hormonal so mm. once the hormones are replaced, then you get pregnant. Go back. Yeah. But I've always wanted to ask too, are there any side effects to, because you hear so many things, people say, oh, it causes this, uh, Mary, if you, if, you, if you use this one, uh, my sister used this, she got an infection, my cousin used this. Everybody has a story. Some people say the injection one is the best one. Some says no, use the IUD. Some said I, I inserted, but before I knew that I was having my bath and it fell off. I hear so many stories. Yeah. Are there um, side effects to all these um, ones that we we use yes anything called even sugar ah, as yes. sweet as sugar <laughs> is, have side effects okay but the fact is before you are uh, chosen for a particular method you would have been screened okay or which yeah. one is suitable That's for true. this some would say ah, i get fat then there are other yes. that, will, yeah, that will not make you fat mm -hmm. so you, m most probably you are screened before you are given the one that suits you so okay. you need to discuss with your health provider and they will be able to help you choose the type that is suitable for you. So it's not just going to say, I want this. Yes. It's yes. to discuss and then come to the right one for you. That is correct. Okay. Um, our next question says, I'm not pregnant, but I have pain in my breast. What does this mean? Mm. She did not specify when she has this pain. She's okay. a lady. We know that there are changes during the yes, cycle. ovulation the month. and stuff, yeah. So she did not specify. Is the pain always there? there. Could it be that it's her ovulation period? Okay. Or is she on and all mm. of that? So pain in the breast needs to be uh, characterized. Okay. Where does the pain come from? So until we know how the pain is, where, when it happens, before you can say, okay, this is likely the cause, cause of the breast of, pain. Okay, so because there's some that comes with your cycle. Your cycle, yes. That's true. Okay, um, she says, Doctor, I started my period on Saturday, and on Sunday it stopped. Until now, no show. So I guess that's some days after. She says, I've been feeling weak, dizzy, and now I have started purging. What do I do? You no, know, I think there are two different pathology. First, your period maybe it has always been more than two days otherwise okay. she will not complain mm. then now she's it's purging shorter. Yeah, yeah it's shorter so the purging maybe passing stool that's what she meant okay uh, that's a different thing entirely oh. but two of them are not related oh, okay. so if you feel that there is a distortion in your menstrual cycle mm. it is better to discuss with a doctor okay who may want to run one or two tests then age it's also mm. a factor here. Really? How old is this person? If this person is 30 years old or 25 years and another person is 50 or 49 years, so they will mean different things. Ah, uh, I So get for it now. someone who is 49 years, uh, you know, that was the time she was not seeing her period. Mm. So it's moving towards the time when they will not see it again. But for someone who is 25, 30, she should be seeing it. So it depends on the age. That will raise the concern. But, um, uh, the best is see a health a professional and then will categorize this stuff and you will be well treated what about um, situations where during almost every time during your menstrual cycle you always have that feeling of weakness and dizziness and you just feel so tired yes it should feel you're losing blood okay you know some persons lose so much mm -hmm. other don't lose that much so when you have lost blood what do you expect mm. the fluid is there the blood is there okay. so that period of time uh, you may not even want to take fluid take water, water. You know, somehow but those that take water will feel less, less but it's normal because you are losing blood so mm. after the flow 
the system recoup and you feel much better again. Okay, before, before I let you go, I'm going to ask one quick question. We always hear um, before your period or during the period, don't take sugar yeah. because it makes it... Is it really true? Is it just a thing to stop those of us that have a sweet tooth? Yeah, I think it's something, it's more psychological. Okay. And, um, and psychologically, you know, you say if I take sugar, it's going to flow more. And when she does not take it, psychologically, she didn't have it much. So somebody has psyched me, because it happens to me all the time. I get yeah. crowns on, on chocolate and stuff, yeah. and I, I really believe it. They've told me since I was a teenager, and I yeah. believe it. And when you stop taking them, you start to feel better. My mother is guilty. Thank you so much, <laughs> Doc. Thank you so much for it's answering all our questions. Remember, keep your questions coming in. If we didn't get to your question today, we'll get to it next week. And of course, the doctor will always answer those of you who want him to answer you privately. Thank you, Dr. Clement. It's my pleasure. All right, take a short break. When we come back, it's still Mother Care. And that's been our offering today on Mother Care. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with us. I do hope you got information and education. For all the questions, thank you so much. Keep them coming in. Our doctors are waiting to always answer your questions. And of course, it guides us to the topics to handle on other editions of the show. My name is Marian. Always a pleasure and privilege bringing the show to you. Thank you for sharing this journey with us. And to all moms, being a mom, best job in the world. Thanks for watching.